to another episode of Hesse and Maven. I'm Justin. I'm Raven. And on this week's episode, we are kickstarting sort of a rebrand of Hesse and Maven. We've decided to dive... <laughs> what is so funny? What is so funny? Why are you laughing? God, I'm just thinking about how right before we started. <laughs> <laughs> all of ripped ass. <laughs> it's all right. so funny because I can't smell it. Oh, well, f*** you. Because your okay. dog is sitting next to me and <laughs> ripped ass. We t- <laughs> Before we started recording, we talked about how Raven doesn't like the phrase rip ass. No. Instead of farting or pass gas or... Cut, I don't like anything except... Ew, I don't like anything <laughs> except farting. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. I think I was trying to be as aggressive as this foul odor that <laughs> has reached my nostrils. Um, but I agree with you. It sounds very, not just aggressive, it sounds very bro Yeah, it is. I, You know what I don't like? I don't, we're already off track. <laughs> Please hold for me to announce our rebrand. <laughs> I don't like it when people say piss. Oh, I don't like that either. I hate that. No. I don't know what it is. No, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that when people are like, I gotta go take a piss. I'm like, get it's so out aggressive. Of here. Or, I have to oh, go pee I, is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we're rebranding. We're doing a little rebrand. So we're still gonna do some episodes here and there that are top fives and stuff like that. Like this episode, for example, which is gonna be top five movie monsters. Ooh, so spooky. different monsters that are in movies. Um the vibe is pretty loosey goosey with this one, gang. It's really just like are they a monster in a movie? That counts. Mm-hmm. Some of them you just look at and you're like, that's a monster for sure. Mm-hmm. And the other ones you look at and you're like, they don't look like a monster. But then you find out what they can do and stuff and you're like, okay, monster. monster. So it's a little loosey-goosey, but just hang hang with us. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, we're going to take a little bit of a turn as Hesse and Maven. And we are going to focus our energy and our effort onto movies, film, which are the same thing, and television. So mm-hmm. we are going to just focus on that. We have a lot of to- fun talking about those kind of topics and different movies and stuff, and we want to bring back the thing where we make each other watch a movie mm-hmm. and analyze it and stuff like that and kind mm-hmm. of do a little film critic vibes. Um, we did, in the last episode, we gave a little shout-out to Cinema Joe, and he commented on that TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> I m- couldn't believe that he did that. Um, my heart skipped a beat. Yeah, when I told you. I was, yeah, I was like, <laughs> You sent me three separate no texts that said, I will die. I love him. I could listen to him talk all day long. Um, I take his movie reviews and his ratings of movies very seriously. Yeah. Recently, he's doing a lot of talk about, um, I think it's like a film studio called A24 Mm. and Studio Ghibli. Yeah. Because I think they're not involved, neither of them are involved in the writer strike. They're not struck companies, yeah. And um, I'm not mad because I love Studio Ghibli. Yes. Um, And, but he's reviewed a lot of Studio Ghibli movies that I haven't seen and now I really, I need to watch them. Yeah, same. They're a lot Because I need to make him proud. I love that. I um, want to remind all of our listeners that we love your support and we love that you are a part of this, but I do need you to tell all your friends to listen to our podcast or watch our YouTube. So it's Hesse and Maven and on all of the socials, it's just one word, Hesse and Maven. That's H-E-S-S-Y and Maven, M-A-V-E-N. So... If this is your first time joining us, quick preview of why we're called that. Uh, my name's Justin, but my whole family calls me Jesse. Growing up, I don't know where that... I mean, I know that it came from my grandma, but no one knows where why that is. It's Jesse is not a nickname for Justin. It just is a thing. And so there was a long time of my life where I thought that was my name. I remember getting a report card in first grade that said Justin Galliani, and I was like... <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> I was like, Mrs. Streisel, you're old and you f***ed up. This isn't me. 
And she was like, this is you. And I was like, whoa, mind blown. Because I thought my last name was Britton. <laughs> and I thought my first name was Jesse. So huge identity crisis there. But anyway, so Jesse and Raven, right? That's what our family calls us. I mean, Raven is Raven. So that's easy for her. Good for her. But um, my dad used to always say as like a uh, fear tactic and like a joke, dad joke kind of thing. Anytime we would get in trouble or act up or anything, he'd be like, keep it up. He's like, you're going to end up just like my other kids, Hesse and Maven. I'm going to bury you right in the backyard next to them. And I'll just make two more kids who look just like you. And that was always the joke. So Hesse and Maven has always been this like idea of these like lost siblings that were killed before we were born. Um, because they misbehaved and they were bad kids. So... That's where Hesse and Maven comes from. So a little little uh, recap on where the name comes from. But yeah. So yeah, we have a podcast, a YouTube, a TikTok, an Instagram. Follow us on all of the things. Hesse and Maven. Usually one word. Yep. Unless you're looking for the podcast, I guess. Give us five stars on whatever app you're listening to the podcast. Send us emails. Hesse and Maven at gmail.com. Josie. And Josie. Josie. So help me, goodness gracious! You've been nothing but a little twerp today. I mean, I started. I watched a little bit of Hey Arnold the other day. Twerp is big in Hey Arnold. Yeah, man, Hey Arnold goes off, dude. I forgot how funny it was. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where they visit. Um, <laughs> I forget what the turtle's name is, but they go to an aquarium mm-hmm. and they see this really old big turtle, and it's like a Galapagos turtle. Okay. Which, first of all, is a tortoise. And eventually they let it, they let it free into the sea, mm-hmm. and that wouldn't work. No, <laughs> that, that Galapagos tortoise would drown. Mm-hmm. But okay, let's pretend like a Galapagos tortoise it can swim and has flippers. Mm-hmm. But um, he goes home and he's like, "Man, Grandma, like, there's this tur- turtle. I hate my life. Why can't I talk?" It's because my brain is saying tortoise and turtle at the same time. So I said turtle. <laughs> Stop it, Raven. Oh, my God. Okay. Reset. Pick it from the top. <laughs> uh, there. He's like, Grandma, there's this turtle at the aquarium, and it looks so sad, and its, it's name is, like, Old Snapper or something, and... Um, it just looks so sad and like there's graffiti on its shell and like the kids were making fun of it and all this different stuff and it's old and the grandma's like the grandma immediately is like well we gotta do something about it let's get him and they dress up in like dark clothes and they break into the aquarium and they break this giant turtle out of the aquarium and let it go into the Aww. like ocean Aww. It's crazy, but there's, like, a whole scene... I love the grandma. There's a whole scene where there's, like, a very small wall on the outside of the aquarium. Mm -hmm. And she throws a grappling hook (laughs) to the top of it and starts climbing up the wall. And and then the camera, like, zooms out, Mm -hmm. and you see that the wall is, like, three feet tall. And Arnold is just, like... (sighs) And just walks around the wall. He's like, you don't have to scale the wall to get into the aquarium. It's just like a decorative wall. So I was, I actually laughed really hard. I was like, yo, this show holds It was a great show. It's so funny. But okay. Let's, as a team, try to make our beginning portions before we get into the top five slightly shorter. Just so that they're not like 30 minutes long. Okay. That being said, I know you wanted to say some stuff. Did you, have you ever... Have, have I ever told you? About, <laughs> we are off to a great start. Have I ever told you about the thing I heard one time on how to distinguish the difference between turtles and tortoises? No, tell me. Turtles, flap, flap. Tortoises, clump, clump. There you go. And I remember it all the time now. And that's, <laughs> that's your science turtle fact? Yeah. There you go. Turtles. Flap, flap. Flap, flap. Tortoises. That's the difference. Gang, you heard it here. Um, no, really quickly, I was just, um, the other day, uh, as I was working, I was listening to, um, Bailey Sarian's episode about Ed Kemper. Oh, yeah. And I was telling my pharmacist all of the true crime facts that I know, because as it turns out, there's a lot. 
Yeah. Um, Crime is pretty old. And um, do you know a lot about Ed Kemper? I know very little. I know that he killed his mom. Or he killed he a bunch it. of people and then, like, was the... Fu- like, was it, like... I know... So, for example, I know a lot of times serial killers will, like, lead up to the actual person that mm-hmm. they want to kill. Mm-hmm. And they'll kill people who kind of look like them yeah. or remind them of that person. Is that kind of what Ed Kemper yeah. did? Like, killed people who reminded him of his mother? Yeah. And I think, then... I think he was, like, so mad at his mom. He hated her so much. He was like, oh, you're yelling at me? <laughs> I'm going to go fucking kill some girls. <laughs> How about that? Mom? How about that, mom? Um talk about the ultimate but <laughs> insult. I learned today some facts about him. Yeah. Um he was really close friends with all the police officers in his city. Mm. They all hung out at the same bar. Yeah. They called him Big Ed because he was 7 foot ni- 6 foot 9. <laughs> he was 6 foot 9. Yeah. Um, so he was huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah big guy. Um, and they all hung out with him. They loved him. They called him Big Ed. He wanted to become a police officer, but he couldn't because he was too big. There are height and weight limits to what you can be if you want to become a police there officer. There are height limits? Mm-hmm. So you're too tall. Yeah. They told him you're too big. You can't. You're too tall, too heavy. That is unreal. Yeah. That's crazy. So he, that's why he couldn't that there come across. Mm-hmm. I didn't know limits. I mean, I can imagine, and no disrespect to short people, mm-hmm. I could imagine being like, sir, you're three feet tall. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. But I can't imagine being like, sir, you're <laughs> like, six, what are you, six foot nine? Six nine. Six nine and being like, no. Yeah. What? I can, I like, mean- too big... Like, too heavy it's in the sense of me. being unathletic. I can understand that. It's crazy to me because but. I feel like I remember growing up and the cops in, some of the cops in our town were not fit. No. I think the way that it works with being a cop is, um, and dad can correct us on this, I think it's really like when you get hired. Yeah. They're like, cool, can you run a mile? Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, I can run a mile right now. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, cool, you got the job. You're good. Yeah. You can let yourself go now. You can totally let yourself go and don't worry about ever being fired. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I just thought that that was crazy. And the first people he ever killed were his grandparents. And Oof. um, when he killed them when he was like seventeen or something like that. Mm-hmm. And when he killed them, the first thing he did, he shot them with his grandfather's gun. And gun safety people. He called his mom and was like, "I killed grandma and grandpa. What do I do now?" And his, his mom was like, "Call the police, or I'm gonna call the police." And they called the police, and he went to like a boys' facility or something because he was under eighteen. Oh boy, seventeen. Get and out they of here. asked him why he did that, and he said. I just wanted to know what it felt like. Little boy. (laughs) And then he was eventually released and killed a lot more people. And go figure. He was only caught after killing a bunch of people, a bunch of girls, uh, because he turned himself in. He was like, they never would have suspected him because all the cops loved him, and he turned himself in. And when he turned himself in, the cops were like, "Big Ed, what are you talking about? Big Ed, we like what?" You hang out with us at the bar. You're not a killer. And he was like, no, I am. And he's like, but actually? I, but actually, I, I killed, all, I killed all those people. <laughs> and he, I think he's still, he might still be alive in in, in prison. prison. He just got wow. like life in prison. Yeah, I just know that they, the acting adaptation in the Mindhunter mm-hmm. is like weird accurate. Oh, it's like, so spot it's on. So spot on. The guy who plays him is like Cameron Britton or Britton yeah. Cameron or something like that. It is Cameron Britton. Yeah. And he looks just like him. It looks but just that like show him. did really well. The guy also the guy who plays uh Charles Manson looks just like him. Yeah, Charles like Manson Charles looks Manson. just like him and so does the um son of Sam. Oh. I can't think of his real Berkowitz. name. Ber- Berkowitz. Is <laughs> David Berkowitz? Something no, you're Berkowitz? you're right. You're his right. Last name? Yeah. They talk about him in Seinfeld a lot. Do you know why? Because it was in New York. Because he was a mailman. Oh, that's like right. Newman. Also that, like Newman, yeah. <laughs> There's an episode where Kramer is betting at an airport mm. on flights. 
and he loses, he runs out of money and he makes Newman bring him a mailbag that was owned by Berkowitz because it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I thought that was some fun facts. I fucking love true crime. Anything about serial killers? I want to know. True crime is interesting. Yeah, maybe we'll do a whole, um, like an episode on movie adaptations of true crime. As opposed to, like, mm. true crime documentaries. Wait, quick. We could also do documentaries, too. But. Have you have you ever heard of the novel The Stranger Beside Me by a woman named Anne Rule? No. So, Anne Rule was a police detective. Okay. And she read this book called The Stranger Beside Me about this man that she worked with at some other job. Mm. Um, and they talked, and they, like, bonded, and they became pretty good friends, and they, like spent days together and all this stuff and um she later came to find out that it was ted bundy little boy could you imagine yeah and she, the whole thing is about how like about that she can't believe that he tricked her because she was like a very good police detective yeah and she had she would have never guessed that it was crazy. which is so crazy and it just makes me think about all the people you meet and it's like you never know you never know mm-hmm. you never know gotta keep your eyes peeled Never know. Gotta keep Notice your eyes weird peeled, red flags. ears open, head on a swivel. Mm-hmm. Always be asking questions, suspicious. Have you seen the movie with uh, Zac Efron? No. Yeah, no. His, uh, it's mostly about the woman that Ted Bundy dated. Yeah. And I, you really feel for her because she raised her daughter around him, and he was a great stepfather for all intents and purposes, and yeah. everything with, between them was great. And then he just kept getting arrested for being a murder suspect. And she, the first time, he was like, no, hun, this is a mistake. Like, they're mistaking me for somebody else. Like, right. I would never do this. And she was like, no, this has to be a mistake. Like, I love you. I believe you. This is crazy. Right. And then it happens, like, four more times. And she's like. <sighs> Fool me three times. All right. <laughs> Maybe. And it just is like, I don't know. It's just, it's, a it's so interesting. It's a like. Much. But no, yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah. It's like. Uh, wickedly evil something or other. I forget. An the... incredibly something. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's called. That's the title. Um, and But I... he's not a movie monster, but he's a real life monster. So it is wrong. Very true. Very true. Yeah, I couldn't watch that because Zac Efron, I think, would take me out of it. Hey. I just watched the D&D movie today, and as much as I did like it, like, Chris overall, Pine. it's a good movie. Chris Pine, Chris Pine took Pine. you out of it? No. Oh. Michelle Rodriguez took me out of it. Oh, because she stinks. Because she, I don't think she, so sorry. If you're listening, Michelle Rodriguez, it's not too late. Change careers. I don't think she's good. I go back to Fast and Furious, Maybe a that's franchise what she's that to I be. don't care about. Um, yeah, I just can't. It's just like, I just don't think. I definitely, of all the types of D&D characters mm-hmm. to be, yes, definitely make her a barbarian who's mm-hmm. just mad most of the time and mm. grunts and... That's what she is in the Whatever. Fast and the Furious movies. I think so. I, it's been so long since I've seen a Fast and Furious movie. I've only seen, a, like, 20 minutes of the first one. And then yeah, I got bored. I've seen the first one, the second one, and the third one. And mm-hmm. then that's it. And I like Vin I'm Diesel, though. very much done with it. I, Vin Diesel's okay, yeah. I in Gilmore Girls, they talk about his mysterious ethnicity, and it makes me laugh. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, um, movie monsters, movie monsters. So we're talking about movie monsters. Now I wanted to run a little quiz by you. Okay. A little trivia quiz, Mm kind of see where your movie monster knowledge is and see Mm -hmm. how lucky you are. And also a little quiz for our listeners and viewers. So I'm going to give you a question and I'm going to give you three options. Mm -hmm. Okay. Multiple choice. Mm Mm-hmm. Some of these, you're just not going to know, and it's going to be pure luck. But take a minute to think about it. That will also give our listeners a second to yell into their car radios what the okay, I'm running. or their headphones or whatever they're listening to us on. In 1932, Boris Karloff played which kind of monster? A, vampire, B, mummy, or C, devil? Vampire? Oh, I didn't wait I did, a minute. Sorry. I did take, it, take a second to think about it. <laughs> is it vampire? It is not. It is mummy. Oh. Would we even know it was him? Was he wrapped up? Dude, it's 1932. 
Who knows? He was totally wrapped up. His role as the mummy begins as a team of explorers unearths the mummified remains of an Egyptian priest named Imhotep. Is Egypt the only place that did mummies? That's a great question. I don't know. For another podcast? I know that there are most of the world's pyramids are in a totally different country. I think Sudan has has pyramids. Has the most the world's most pyramids. Isn't it interesting that one country was like, we got to do this. <laughs> and like a bunch of other countries never did that. They uh, were like, we got to do this. Well, it's interesting because it really is just a difference of like cultures. But like there's so many. My, I think it's more interesting to ha- how many overlaps there are. Mm. Like how there are uh, what are sometimes referred to as like ziggurats. In mm-hmm. other countries, like if you think of like a Mayan temple, mm-hmm. you think of, it's a ziggurat. Like, so it's a pyramid, but it's got steps. Yeah. yeah. Just interesting. Interesting. Um, in what year did the original Godzilla movie hit theaters? 1948, 1950, or 1954? When can I answer? Hmm? When can I answer? Bum, 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 bum. Now. 1954? Correct. Yes. In 1954... Th- oh, no. <laughs> I'm not laughing at this fun fact. <laughs> it's just... It threw me off. It surprised me. Okay. In 1954, the atomic bombings of Japan and World mm. War II were still very much a part of world culture. Japanese filmmakers used the attacks as inspiration for Godzilla. That's upsetting. That's upsetting. I mean, coping through media. Mm. Who was the star of 1941's The Wolfman? Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney Jr., or Bella Lugosi? Lon Chaney Jr. Correct! Lon Chaney Jr. was so popular in his role as the werewolf that he played the character in four sequels. I would not want to be named Lon... No. No, no, no. I would hate that. No offense. How does the werewolf finally die at the end of The Wolf Man? Set on fire, beaten to death, or silver bullet? Silver bullet? Audience, you got to answer faster because Raven (laughs) is hot on your heels, okay? You have no chance to think. (laughs) Sorry. Um... I'm probably not right. I feel like that's modern. Unfortunately, that is wrong. Is it fire? It is beaten to death. Okay. His own father beats him to death with a walking Jesus. stick. A silver walking stick that happens to have the power to kill a supernatural creature. One time, I was on vacation with the colonels in Tennessee, and we were at a gift shop in the mountains, and there was like a big display of like different walking sticks, and it said walking sticks, and Leanna was picked one up and was like, what are these even used for? That sounds like something Leanna would say. Yeah. And then I think on that same trip, she said that she wanted, um, she asked what the past tense of breathe was because she thought that it was brothed. Brothed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one I'm going to give her a pass for. Brothed? Because I get that. It's stupid, <laughs> but it's like lizard brain. Like, I get it. <laughs> Whereas picking up a stick near a sign that says walking sticks and going what is this for (laughs) is dumb that's just fucking dumb is mayonnaise (laughs) what are these pants okay um how many times has king kong been remade for the big screen two times four times five times Four times. Wrong. Is it five times? It only says two times. Oh, okay. The 1933 classic has been remade twice. Once in 1976 and once in 2005. King Kong isn't my favorite story because I feel like I want King Kong and the girl he saves to date. And that's like a weird (laughs) part of my brain I don't want to address. That's honestly fucking valid. Yeah, that is weird, but also, I get it. 
I get it. It's why I don't want to watch The Shape of Water because I feel like I'm gonna have oh, I watched that. Feelings. I watched it on a plane. I think. Really? Yeah, and I thought that it was weird, but I liked that there's sign language, and I mm. love Octavia Spencer. So. Yeah. And it is one of those like, you're rooting for the main characters, and you're you hate the government, and you're like fuck the government, which I'm always here for that. Always here for that. So. <clears throat> In the original King Kong, where does the monster come from? Australia, Death Mountain, or Skull Island? Death Mountain. Incorrect. Is it Skull? Skull Island. (sighs) I thought about Skull Island because I feel like I've heard of that, but I thought maybe that was like a sequel. Yeah, I think it is referenced in the sequel. I also don't know if that original, that previous question is correct now. I think I don't know when this quiz was made. Mm, 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 mm. Um, but anyway. Yeah, Skull Island. A film crew looking for fame manages to capture Kong on Skull Island and then makes a critical error in deciding to transport the creature to New York City. Mm. Uh, last but not least, okay. in what year was the original Frankenstein movie released to theaters? Okay. 1928, 1931, or 1942? 31. Quick. <laughs> Sorry, I keep forgetting. <laughs> that is correct, though. I knew it was super old. Ma- it released Mary in Shelley is super old. Yeah. Uh, the film is based on the novel of the same name and features a scientist who fabricates a monster from parts of dead bodies. Mm. Mary Shelley is the author, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm Mary Shelley's author, Frankenstein. Right. I wanted to see the movie where um, Haley Steinfeld, I think, plays her. Oh, plays the writer. Plays Mary Shelley. Plays Mary Shelley. Very interesting. I heard that um, Mary Shelley, when she wrote Frankenstein... She was on like this interesting writers, if you want to call it, almost like a writers retreat, where mm. it was like her and a bunch of other authors, mm-hmm. like in a cabin. Oh, like they like you know how John Green does that sometimes, mm-hmm. where he like secludes himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that, but like with a group of authors, and oh, that's like where she wrote it. I've heard of people doing that? So I thought Writer, that was that's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's actually the one piece of inspiration for one of Chuck Palahniuk's books, Mm. the guy who wrote Fight Club. Mm. Um, It's the inspiration for his book. uh, I want to say that it's called Haunted. Mm. I could be wrong. It's been so long since I've read that book, but it's a million short stories. And then like the short stories are also interspersed with like an overarching story of a group of writers who are locked in a, but they're like locked in the Mm -hmm. room. Um, or locked in the house and they only have so much food and it gets wild. Mm. Um, I had even heard like when I was reading it, I did some research on it and I found out that when he was going around the country doing book tours and like reading, you know, authors will like read an excerpt of the book, people passed out. From excitement? From how intense the writing is at certain parts. Yeah, it's wild. There's the first short story that you read in the book is called Guts. Oh, boy. I almost passed out today. I was walking around Asbury Park, and I was in this basement-level store that mm. didn't have air conditioning. Oh, boy. And in the store, I'm walking around, and I... You know when you are starting to feel like you have to poop, and your stomach hurts, and then you start to get really hot? hmm So, I was really hot from the no air, and then I was really hot because I was starting to feel like I had to poop, <laughs> and my stomach was hurting, and sweat was, like, beating down my forehead, and I was like, I'm going to pass out in this clothing <laughs> store. And it smelled like incense, which I, controversial take, I hate. Yeah. I hate incense. I have to admit it. I don't no, I get like it. that I'm that person because I love the vibe of like, I light an incense. And I love the, the vibe the, of incense. The smoke and the energy and the whatever. Yeah. I hate incense. They no. give me a headache. I don't like the smell. It makes me feel like I, I don't know. I'm in this weird place. That I don't want to be in. Yeah. And I hate it. And I it was a horrible feeling and then I had to run. To no, find it's the like patchouli bathroom. vibes. It's it's like not a patchouli. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I agree I had to go you, to though. a Korean taco place called Mogo. To go to the bathroom? Yeah, I had to poop in there and I didn't need any? anything. But we should go. Oh yeah, we absolutely should go. Yeah. Um Okay. All right, I'm ready. 
let's get into it. So, top five movie monsters. Ooh. Now, my list is a little bit all over the place. So is mine. Um, okay, good. So, we'll be bouncing back and forth with some crazy ideas. Anyway, would you like to go first? Sure. Okay. Let's start with number five, and let's do it. Okay. My number five is a monster played by the actor Ron Perlman. Oh, yes. I know. Yep. You know it? I think I know exactly, unless he played another monster. <laughs> Hellboy. Hellboy. Um, it's pretty random. It is. I didn't, I didn't think of it until I was doing. That. I've seen the first one. Yeah. I think there's more than one, but I've seen the first one. Um, I didn't really think of it until I was looking up movie monsters, and mm-hmm. then I saw it, and I remembered how much I like the movie. Um, I love Ron Perlman. Yeah. I love his like deep like gravelly voice and his like he's got a good voice brooding he's in um he's like one of the main characters in sons of anarchy yep and he fits very well there too he's just very like what's up guys even in real life grumbly like i mean you've seen him like if you've seen any clips of him talking about the writer's strike and talking mm -hmm. like as if he's talking to these like high level execs Mm -hmm. he's scary yeah. I mean, I'm all for it because, like, I support everything he's saying. Mm-hmm. But he's straight up, like, looking into camera and just going, oh, I know where you live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll find you. And you're yeah, like, he's Jesus scared. Christ. Um, but this also <laughs> says that in another Hellboy movie, Hell- Hellboy is played by David Harbour. Yeah, the most recent one. Oh, uh, okay. It's like the third one. Um, Perlman plays it the first two times. But I do love Ron Perlman. Um, and I love the brooding... Um, energy of hellboy and i love that he has a romantic interest who is played by selma blair who i think right yeah i think so yeah um if not it's an actress who looks just like her no it's definitely selma <laughs> blair um and i just think that he's like really badass and like really cool and i love the like i feel like hellboy is one of those like superhero movies that has like a lot of cheesy dialogue like he'll pop in someplace and just like say something stupid and you're like yeah He'll like, Hell, open a door and be like, the gates of hell have opened. <laughs> and you're like, all right. All right, Hellboy. <laughs> this is why they call you Hellboy and not Hellman. Yeah, I really like it. Um, And then this also says that... Yeah, probably, I, I've also probably. seen... <laughs> what? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, probably doesn't even have a trash can in his apartment. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Um... <laughs> This I've seen um, in one of the Hellboys, the villain is Nimue, the blood witch or something, mm-hmm. played by Mila Jovovich. Oh, we love Mila Who Jovovich. I love. Yep. Um, and then it says that this guy is in uh, the movie too, Doug Jones. Yeah, he plays Abe Sapien. Who's oh my like, God, he's scary looking. He, You won't even see him. He's wearing makeup the whole time. He's... Like he, he looks plays like the, the crypt keeper. He, he plays the blue guy. Oh. The shape of water looking guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Does he play shape of water? I think so. He plays yeah, he plays so, so many people like that. Like he's in Hocus Pocus. He plays the zombie guy. Oh. He's in um I think he also is in Pan's Labyrinth. Oh. He he plays this? so I think. He plays so many monsters. Because he's scary as hell. He's so scary yeah, looking. Yeah. Once you put makeup on him, though, that doesn't matter at all. He's, just he's like really so. Good at there's a guy who comes acting. to the. There's a guy who comes to the pharmacy who looks just like this, mm-hmm. and he talks just like Fred from Seinfeld, which is a deep cut. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this guy is so scary. But yeah, I love Hellboy. That's a good one. Um, it's my number five favorite movie monster amazing um oh i wanted to include a little quote that is in the wikipedia description of hellboy okay where he's described as a devilish indiana jones with a slightly surlier disposition interesting which i like i like that i've never seen an indiana jones movie oh i care so little about indiana jones yeah all i know is that he's supposed to be like an explorer adventurer kind of type I don't know if that fits. I don't like that he's like a thousand years old and still doing it. Like, yeah, I don't know if that's a hundred percent his fault. I know, but just retire. You can do it now. 
You don't have to retire. You can just do different movies. Retire oh, from Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. Um, unless you're doing like a cameo of like, we're going to go visit an old friend of mine. And it's like Harrison Ford in a wheelchair. Like, I remember when I was an explorer. <laughs> then that's okay. But yeah. Anyway. All right. That's my number five. What's your number that's five? That's a good one. My number five is probably my most interesting take on my whole list. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I picked him specifically because he is a villain in this particular movie full of monsters, actually. Mm-hmm. My number five is Randall Boggs from Monsters, monsters Inc. Inc. He's a annoying villain. He, he makes is. me want to like... You know? He is an annoying villain. He is played by the great Steve Buscemi. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, he is the antagonist of Disney slash Pixar's 2001 animated movie, Monsters, Inc. Mm-hmm. Um, he is snide and vindictive. Very snide. He has a big jealousy issue with uh, Sully. And he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. He has Slytherin vibes for sure. <laughs> Very ambitious. He's the Draco Malfoy of that movie. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's probably even worse than Draco Malfoy. Yeah, he's because uh, he's not like tricked into doing it or forced into doing it. Yeah. he's totally doing it on his own. The Draco Malfoy in the jealousy sense, like mm-hmm. you can tell Draco's jealous of Harry. Like everyone loves Harry. For sure, for sure. <coughs> everyone um, loves Sully. But yeah, Sullivan. <laughs> Yeah, he teams up with the evil spider boss and uh, What's the boss's name? Just thinks about starting to kidnap kids in order to steal their screams and essentially kill them. Um, but yeah, he's just like this weird chameleon-esque monster with purplish skin that has some stripes on it and he has some weird danglies on his head that kind of appear like hair. And he's got multiple legs and he just kind of like can stick to walls and stuff and change colors to match a million different things mm-hmm. and it's just like very sneaky, sneaky he's very sneaky. sneaky and steve buscemi just does such a good job i just really liked him because i was like i like him as a monster because he definitely came across like this guy is pure villain vibes yeah he's but shit. compared to sully like he just doesn't look very uh scary or yeah, like he, he doesn't slimy. look intimidating yeah but he did come across as very intimidating Mm. because of just like how evil he was yeah and i think that's really at the end of the day what won it for me do you know what the boss's name is for monsters without looking it up because i just looked it up and i would have never guessed it in a million years oh man no i would sit here for too long water noose water noose (laughs) no yeah i would never have gotten that (laughs) weird (laughs) weird crazy um randall's a good one he's a good villain yeah he's very like you just hate him like uh um, that's, that's why i picked like him as opposed to any Potter. of the other characters um oh like umbridge yes. yeah for sure uh quote by randall boggs i am about to revolutionize the scaring industry and when i do even the great james p sullivan is gonna be working for me oh my god yep i love him um can you do can you do bugs in the car in in uh, when he turns back in action? What does he say? <laughs> Dude, hold on. He says, um, "Oh shit! Hold on, wait." Uh, he goes to press a button, and she says, "Don't stop pressing buttons." And he goes, "Shh! I am about to defy you." <laughs> And he presses the button anyway. <laughs> oh, it's not my best bug God, money. It's but... so good. I'm due for a rewatch of that movie. Oh, it's such a good movie. Um, okay. You ready for my next one? I'm ready for your next one. Your number four movie monster. It is Celine from mm. the Underworld series. Very good. Um, played by Kate Beckinsale, the one, the only, the beautiful. Um, she's absolutely stunning. I remember when I first saw the Underworld movies and I thought, like, there could not be a prettier woman. Like, she's so flawless. It's unreal. Yeah. Um, but I love her so much. I love her character in that in those movies. Um, I remember rooting for her. And, like, she's so relatable because she just wants, like, 
the the scary like dad vampire to like approve of her Victor her mouth, like he loves her or something and she's like doing stuff and like all the other vampires are fighting her maybe I'm thinking of the other one and she's like no like we need to do this and yeah like Victor like what about him and they're all like being shady and then she brings him I remember watching the scene where she like secretly like brings him back to life because he's like sleeping or whatever he's mm-hmm. like very scary and like you know um and then she brings him back and he's scary um and then the scene where she's like driving an 18 wheeler and she like drives it into a warehouse and she's trying to protect the the, the werewolf guy Michael. the dude who's like both Yes. He's like half of yeah, each. He's yes. Half Big and spoilers half. for Underworld. Um, they're old. Um and um they like love each other and she has to protect him. Um but he's like stupid and immature and naive and she's like this boss who like will fight anybody. She's a badass, yeah. Yeah, she's and the And she's always yeah. wearing a skin tight leather cat suit. Yeah, always. Um zipped to an appropriate level and then there's like it's like vampires but also very futuristic where there's Mm -hmm. like it's futuristic in the sense of like certain technology like they're still driving like cars and shit but like there's also like high tech guns that have like bullets that have UV in them Mm. because like vampires can't do sun and then like it's just yeah it's really fun there's like one scene where they're in this like dilapidated building where there's like a bunch of water at the bottom and mm-hmm. it's like all it's like Celine uh oh it's like Celine fighting a bunch of the werewolves and they're like scary bipedal werewolves and they're like yeah. huge they have like these big chests and these big giant heads and yeah 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 like they're all like trying to kill her and there she's falling all over the place and there's it's like so crazy and then, like a helicopter crashes in and yes like, that she just like pushes the guy back into, into a the spinning helicopter, helicopter blade and yeah it's a great it's got such good fight scenes it really does um, it's so fun but i love that was when i first loved kate beckinsale and i Same. love vampires and it's a fantastic movie series i don't think i finished it i think i've only seen the first two i don't Same. know what el- what el- whatever else came after that um, it was like something silly, like Rise of the Lycans or something. Yeah, I never got into that. Or they did like a prequel movie about the Lycans, and it was like, guys, I'm here for Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. Like, and I really liked the dude who played Michael, I think his name mm. was, the guy who was the half and half. Yeah. I really liked him too. Yeah. So I was always like, those are the two that I'm here about. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that's my that's number a four. Really good one. Yeah, she's great. Um, okay. My number four is really specific. So some of this is biased because it's one of my favorite, like, books. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a character, a main character based on a book. But it, in this movie, he's just, like, one of many characters. Um, so anyway, it is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mm. Specifically from... A League of Extraordinary... Or The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Mm. Okay. Are you familiar? I've heard of it. Okay. Sean Connery's in it. And there's a bunch of different things. There's like a woman who's like a vampire creature. There's Dorian Gray, the guy with the painting. Mm-hmm. Um, Captain Ahab, I think, is in it or something like that. Um with like his nautilus maybe it's not ahab maybe it's nimoy or something it's the Ten Thousand leagues under the sea whoever did that um there is other monsters as well but one of them is like dr jekyll and mr hyde so it really just ends up being like a bunch of things from like folklore and like literature kind Mm -hmm. of like all mixed together and i just love stuff like that so there's just yeah there's one character who's dr jekyll and mr hyde and i was just like so into it because like he um physically like it's just like this really skinny guy who's like nerdy and smart and is like well i think that we might be able to get done with this and just very like "Eh." and then like transforms and like his really intense posh british accent immediately just becomes like all right i guess we'll get them done (laughs) and you're like okay i buy this i buy Mm -hmm. this and he's wearing like ripped clothes and like it looks like a man gorilla um 
But I just always remember being super into it. I love that movie to begin with. It's so cheesy and dumb, but, like, I like it. Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde always kind of, like, made me nervous because I feel like the idea of that, of someone being that, like, someone, I guess it's essentially, like, it could just be someone kind of, like, with DID, like, where they have one personality, but they don't know about the other one. I suppose. And the other one, one of them is, like, very scary. Mm -hmm. Um, That is, like, scary to me because, like, if you're friends with the nice one... And then you're, like, talking to them, and you're, like, having a great time, and then it switches to the mean, scary one. Oh, but it's, like, a physical transformation as well. So, it's yeah. in that way, it's not, like, DID. D- yeah, fair. Because it's, like, if he changed in front of you, you would instantly know. Mm. Without him even saying a word. Because, like, he physically changes in the book and in this movie. Even if he does physically change, like, how scary. Like, if oh, you very don't, scary. If you don't know. Yeah, for sure. Then he changes, and you're, like, fuck, and then he tries to attack you. Like, oh, my God, that's yeah. Because the whole thing is, like, yeah, he's taking something. He's taking, like, a drug. Polyjuice potion? To, mm-hmm. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's taking something, and it's changing him into this. Mm. And it's all in the cer- like this experimentation that he's, like, self-doing. Like, mm. self-experimentation. Um, and it turns him into Mr. Hyde, who is ruthless and animalistic and sort of has um, much darker... It's kind of more of a commentary on, like, the ego versus id sort of inside of all of us kind of idea. Same with Freud. Are you just naming psychiatrists that you know of? Didn't he talk about ego and id? I'm sure he did. Oh. I like it as a Carl Halloween. Young? <laughs> he did talk about did. ego and id. How do you know? I feel like I remember... Remember from what? Carl Young was like ink blots. <laughs> I feel like moving on. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, w- it would be a good Halloween costume. Like if you did one on the front and then one on the back, or like just in half. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like what, a face on your on the back of your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from the back, sure. you're Hyde, and on the front, you're Jekyll. Yeah. Which what's is the your, evil one? What's your number three? Okay. <laughs> um, my number three is the fawn from Pan's Labyrinth. That's a really good one. Love Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, there's a lot of monsters in it. I didn't pick this one because he's Pan terrifying. He is and really scary. That I scene, him. that scene infuriates me because she has one job: don't eat the fucking food on the table. And she goes in there and she's like, grape. A grape. grape. <laughs> and she goes and picks a grape. And then in the presence of like the world's scariest creature. Uh, I know. Is it like magically enchanted to like make her want to eat the grape? Like, or I don't know. Is it like a forbidden fruit kind of thing? I don't know. I think she's just stupid. I don't know. Yeah. Kids are brats. Um, But... <laughs> No, I love the fawn. When he was first introduced, yeah. he has this quote, which I love. Mm-hmm. Are you um, say it in Spanish, please? No. Oh, um, bummer. Uh, she says, what's your name? Mm-hmm. And in Spanish, I in translated into English, he says, Anna? quote, I've had so many names, old names that only the wind and the trees can pronounce. I am the mountain, the forest, and the earth. I am a fawn. End quote. Mm. Which is like such an introduction. Well, yeah. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's cool. so cool. And he just tells her what to do. And there's a scene where she messes up. Like, I think it's when she eats the food. Mm-hmm. Um, and he flips out and he like screams at her. And he's like, he's like, you aren't the one who was promised. Like, you're not the girl. Like, you're not the one. You fucked up. Like, how could you do that? And she's like crying. And it's like very emotional. Um, she ends up being the one at the end, which I love when she like returns to like the their world. world or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, he says in the beginning when he meets her that her dad is the king of the underworld, and um, she was taken from them, and like he, the king of the underworld, opened portals all around the world to try to allow her entry to come back. 
Um, and they all closed except for that one where the fawn was. That was the last portal. Um, so she returns and then it's that movie is very emotional. Um, there's a lot of scary bits. Yeah, but, it's um, really intense. That part in the very beginning where the evil guy like uh He's catches cool. the two people who were hunting mm. like on his property or yeah. whatever and like uses the bottom of a wine bottle mm-hmm. and like bashes his head in. Yeah, it's or, like, very the, gory. The like kind of tortury scenes are like really intense. That movie's wild. Yeah, there's it's gory It's very bits. good, it's, but it's yeah. it really intense. I like the fantasy bits. I, sometimes I'll watch it and I'll fast forward to the the <laughs> like the Spanish war parts. Yeah, the, the scary Spanish I don't war. like the war parts or the scary bloody parts, but I do like the part where the woman attacks him. Mm-hmm. The scary guy. Um and I like all the fantasy bits, like with the fairies and yeah. Ophelia is the the girl's name. Mm, that's a um, good name. Yeah, and I like listening to the Spanish. Yes, it's very nice. Um, I really do like the fawn. The fawn is a great pick because the fawn encapsulates, I think, a really good mix of like being like very otherworldly mm. and like a little scary. Yeah. Even though like, especially when he like raises his voice, but yeah. like even before that, like he. No, he's a it's, scary. It doesn't like instantly. I'm like, oh, this amazing mm-hmm. creature from another world. It's like, no, he's scary. Jesus, he's you're a little so bit scary. tall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's mm-hmm. a great pick. Yep, love him. Um. Okay, my number three are the Nazgul from Lord of the Rings. I can't relate to this. Well, do your best. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the Nazgul are, well, have you ever, um, seen clips of the dudes? They kind of look like Dementors would probably be the closest that you'll understand in terms of a reference point. They're like the ones who ride horses. Um, the horses also look like all black and like armored black armor. They have like the black shrouds over their heads. You can barely ever see their faces and they, sometimes you'll just hear like screams, (laughs) Is it in the one where the girl takes her helmet off and fights the guy? Kind of. He's like the head of them. He's like the leader okay. of them. Okay. So I'm getting a good idea. Yeah. The witch king or something like that is what he is called. But I think technically he's like the leader of the Nazgul. Mm. Um, so anyway, here's a quote from Gandalf sort of explaining what they are. Okay. Nine he gave to mortal men. Proud and great, and so ensnared them. Long ago, they fell under the dominion of the One, and they became ring wraiths, shadows under his great shadow, his most terrible servants. Long ago. It is many a year since the Nine walked abroad, yet who knows? As the shadow grows once more, they too may walk again. Nine? There's nine of them. Oh. So the Nazgul, or which is black speech, which is specifically like evil speech. Um, it's not like Ebonics or something mm. crazy. Um, for ring wraiths. So like a wraith is like this undead creature. And then ring wraiths because like they were given rings and they're searching for the ring. Um, also known as the Black Riders or simply the Nine. So, they were the men, um, in the very beginning of Lord of the Rings, they'll explain it. So, this isn't a spoiler, this is, like, context. Um, a bunch of rings were created, right? They gave nine to men, like humans, um, three to elves, and a certain number to dwarves. True Lord of the Rings fans will hate that I don't know the exact numbers, but who cares? And then Sauron, the super evil guy, created one, right? And um, it corrupted most of the rings, with the exception of the ones for the elves, corrupted them. Like, uh, they were, they all had, like, evil in them. So the nine men who get, were given these powerful rings, um, it made them, it made it so that when they died, they'd become, like, these undead servants of the big bad evil guy. 
and they're just really scary um every time they show them towards the beginning they are main like 90 percent of the time they're faceless Mm. um they also like there's the nine men getting the rings Mm. um the witch king and they're so scary looking like they just the idea of not seeing like what their faces look like is so scary and then the first time you do see their faces is in the first movie um frodo is about to be attacked by them so he knows that when he puts on the ring um even though he's explicitly told not to when you put on the ring you'll turn invisible so he thinks like "I'll, i'll get out of this you know i can run away as soon as he puts on the ring, the ring rates, because they're connected to the ring and they are undead and magical in nature, they can see him. Mm-hmm. And now when Frodo's looking at them, they don't look like just a black robe with no face. Uh, he sees like white, ghostly, like terrifying looking faces looking at it, wearing like creepy crowns and like they end up stabbing him. Jesus. At that point, yeah, um, yeah, they're just scary. Um, the the screeching and stuff like that. Like every scene with them is just very dark and scary. They do a lot of like slow mo of them on the horses. Mm. Like it just like is very scary. Mm-hmm. Um, the scenes in the very beginning when the hobbits are like hiding under like a root of a tree and mm-hmm. like you see the horse like very slowly like walk right near that and just like the horses <sighs> doing mm-hmm. its horse things yep. and like it is terrifying yeah, like it's, so it sounds scary it's one of those things that like i was like really struggling it was on a couple lists that mm-hmm. i looked up for movie monsters and it, it was on some lists and i was like okay that's maybe not what i w- would have originally thought of mm-hmm. when i would think was thinking of like movie monsters but like it fits the vibe because mm-hmm. it's terrifying yeah they're that's scary. scary so that's what i picked um that story reminds me of something i heard once on a true crime podcast that i thought was very interesting mm-hmm. that if you get like attacked by somebody or like taken or whatever and they don't show their face mm-hmm. it's better oh yeah because you, they, you you're it. probably gonna live which doesn't matter to them because you can't identify them anyway right but if they show their face they're probably gonna kill you so that you can't identify them god so scary which is scary so scary but interesting yeah um that's a good one thank you it's good it's good um, monsters monsters are scary too back to hopefully fictional movie monsters okay yes um my number two mm-hmm. is Mothra. 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 Now, I've never seen a movie with Mothra, but I did a lot of research on Mothra. This is, yeah, that this is right up your alley anyway. During this research. To be like, I've never seen this creature until I saw a picture of it, and now I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. Um, <laughs> look at you. Um... Please excuse us. Um, the dogs <laughs> need to constantly be let in and out of um, the doors. Mothra, I figured out uh, through research, is always female. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Mothra is always a girl. Um, yeah. And girl power. Um, she exists in the same universe as um, Godzilla. Yep. Um, and I read this quote by Jim Vorel okay. in Paste Magazine. Oh. Okay, this is the quote. Mm. <clears throat> this is what made me love Mothra. Quote, Mothra is a symbol of the natural world fighting back against crass, cynical exploitation by greedy capitalists, making her the protector of indigenous people everywhere. End quote. Wow. Yeah. Okay, queen. <laughs> Go on, Mothra. Get your shit done, girl. What the hell? Do I love Mothra now? Yes. God dang. I love it. That's amazing. I was like, I love her. I love you, Mothra. Rightfully so. That's, yeah, that's What an incredible monster. That's really She fights for good. 
That's really good. Yeah. Wow. I know. And I now I need that. to see Tony saw some Godzilla movie where Mothra is there, and now I'm like, I feel like I have to watch it now. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I know that they've done a bunch of Godzilla movies in the last like ten years. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think she is in the like newer one. That's like. It's is not it Godzilla like, vs King Kong? No. Oh. Although maybe because I don't really know. Mm. I thought she was in the um like Godzilla King of the Monsters one. Hmm. Because it was like a bunch of kaiju. Maybe. Anyway. I love that though. I yeah, always she's knew my Mothra number two. was one of, like, one of the other things that Godzilla fights. Yeah. Wow. So love interesting. Her. She's a queen. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, my number two is pretty short because my number two is Celine from. <laughs> <laughs> from Underworld. We both love her. I love her so much. Kate Beckinsale. Underworld movies. You are gotta so do another one. Yeah, I'm sure um, we watch those sometime soon. We really should. Especially because the first one, I don't even know if I've seen it or when I saw it. I know that I saw the second one in theaters oh. with Max Loth, and I mm. loved it. It was so it's cool. Really good. It was, yeah, Is that it was the one with the so helicopter? badass. That's the one with the helicopter. That one? And that's the one with the dude who's like half. Mm hmm. I don't know. In the first one, he might be in it, but it, I feel like it's probably towards the end. Yeah, sort I think of. it is towards the end. But he's like in the entirety of the mm -hmm. first one. And that's the one where they resurrect the first vampire and the first werewolf. And it's like Victor and Marcus. Yeah. And Victor loves Celine. No. No? False. No. There's somebody who loves Celine. That might, like be, he's the, an old that might be the first he, one. He favors her. Over, like, that, all the other ones, and that's why they hate her. That might be the first one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm okay. pretty confident that you're talking about the first one. Because mm. in the second one, that is not a thing. Mm. She is very much into the half guy. No, not romantic love. Like... No, I understand what you're like saying. Like, you're my daughter. Yeah, that doesn't come up. Because mm. she kills the leader of the vampires. Not even Victor. Like, because Victor is, like the first yeah. vampire he's like the one who's like mummified and they have to bring him back yeah but then bill nye plays like a really old vampire yeah you think i'm talking about the science guy and i'm not i'm talking about bill nye the guy who plays um uh he plays scrimgore in the harry potter movies or he plays um fucking davy jones in the pirates of the caribbean Yes. He's a really specific way of talking. Yes. Um, that's who plays, I think, the character that you're talking about. But enough of that. Okay. I just loved her in this. I thought she was such a badass. She was so fun and, like, absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. Yeah, she is. She's stunning. I mean, yeah. You're wearing a leather cat suit th throughout the whole movie and doing a million acrobatic flips mm -hmm. and stuff. It has a very, like, 2000s vibe of action movie and i was just so into it it was awesome like there there's like fight scenes and then there's like gun fight scenes because that's a part of it and yeah like all this stuff i was just so 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 into it um it's fantastic yeah and it has like a little bit of like mm, mystery and stuff like that she has to figure things out and like mm -hmm. that's always fun to like go along with the character and as she discovers the root of all these different things or figures out where because victor when he comes back his whole vibe is he wants to bring his brother back yeah that's like his main thing is i want to bring my brother back to life isn't uh and he needs like that key that's like a medallion isn't the um the first werewolf the first lichen mm-hmm isn't he um, the guy who plays opposite David Tennant in the Good show Omens? in no. Good Opens? No. He's just an old lichen. But he's not the first lichen. Because the first lichen is pure But you know the werewolf. actor I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. That actor is in it, right? He's only in the first one. I don't think he's in the second one. But he's in the Underworld movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't think of his name. Neither Sheen? can I. Mark Michael Sheen, Martin Sheen. 
No, because I think that makes me think of the others. Anyway. Okay. That's my number two. Yeah, Celine is excellent. Celine. Yeah. Love her. Love her so much. Okay. Are you ready for my number one? I'm ready for your number one monster. And I'm trying to think of what it could be. It's two. It's a duo. It's a duo. Mm -hmm. Is it Mike and Sully? Nope. Is it... um, Is it... Oh, now I'm trying to think of... Are they known for being a duo? Yes. Oh, wow. All right, gang. Let's let's sparse this out a little bit. Mm, And I'm done. I have no idea. (laughs) Okay. It's Simone Lenoir and Lena Dupree. Oh. From Scooby Doo on yep. Zombie Island. That's fucking okay. <laughs> One of the most cinematic masterpieces that has ever been made. I've referenced it before as it has one of the movie foods that I would like to eat when they eat the crawfish. Crawdads, yeah, like crawfish. Um Simone and Lena are werecats. And they turned into werecats as an act of vengeance against the pirate captain, Morgan Moonscar, who invaded their land. Yeah. The vibes of this movie are immaculate. It's such a good movie. It's like Halloween vibes. It's like deep New Orleans vibes. The accents. Morgan Moonscar. Like it's great, yeah. just Lena Dupree, Simone. Lenoir. But what is this? What is? Does he have a scar on his face? You bet he does. What is it shaped like? You know it's shaped like a moon. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's, it's shaped like a crescent moon. Excellent zombies, were cats. Like these two are just like they lure you in in the beginning because they're oh, sweet yeah. and pretty and they have this beautiful house and then like random things start happening and everyone's like. Mm. Yeah. And then it's like a full moon or something, and they're like, "Bam, we're fucking werecats." Yeah. And we hate Morgan Moonscar, and we're fucking, <laughs> you know. I do know. And it's so good. It's so good. It's got good I love music. Them. It's got good scenes, funny mm-hmm. comedy. I love all of it. That, I, yeah, I really a great need to watch. One. We, I really need to rewatch that. It's we do. season. Well, we listen, hey, now that our podcast is going to be have a little bit more focus. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Yeah, we it'll need count to watch as research. Scooby and we'll just watch Island. a bunch of movies. We need to watch. Oh, because Halloween is coming. Up. Halloween is coming up. We have to do top five Halloween movies or something, or make all of October. We could do it for all of October, Raven. Curse of the Were Rabbit. We didn't watch it last oh, year. We Walsh failed. And Gromit, we failed. Yeah, we got to do it. We gotta watch that. Okay, we'll do it okay. all of October. We'll do Halloween spooky movies. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Not scary though. Because I don't like scary. No, Spooky. neither do I. It's going to be an interesting take. Yeah. That being said, are you ready for my number one? I'm ready. My number one is the only scary movie I've ever seen <laughs> all the way through and liked it, seen it multiple times, and saw the sequel in theaters. Can I guess? You're going to know what it is. Is it Pennywise? It's Pennywise. It's scary. My number one is Pennywise um, from Stephen King's It. Also in the It movie and then It 2. Um, specifically the new ones. Listen, I love Tim Curry. Mm-hmm. He's great. I think his portrayal of Pennywise in the... Like, it originally was made into like a very short like TV movie series kind of thing where there was like episodes mm-hmm. and he was the clown and he looked very like, if you can lean over, very clown like, mm-hmm. heavy clown like yeah. Bozo the clown. Yeah. And then obviously, um, Bill Skarsgård is Bill Skarsgård, uh, and the director obviously also went in a different direction, mm-hmm. still clown like, but much scarier from the get go. Whereas if you were to just look at Tim Curry, you wouldn't like immediately be like, oh, terrifying mm-hmm. shape shifting alien monster. <laughs> yeah become the, my worst fears mm-hmm. you're just like oh kind of a creepy clown mm-hmm. clown and then like he does some shit and like shows his teeth and you're mm-hmm. like oh now you're scary but mm-hmm. like 
Skarsgård always scary. <laughs> yeah, he's scary without the clown makeup, so it works. He does have that look. Yeah, I've seen him in do inter- shemmy eyes. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen him in the interviews do the lip thing, mm-hmm. where he like can like almost like the way that like a grizzly bear has like their bottom lip that mm-hmm. like is really like loose yeah and he can just do that and i was like what and he can do the eye thing where like one of his eyes just kind of like oh scary bill Hader was in an interview and he was like talking to him in between takes because he said like the guy's so nice Mm -hmm. um but in between takes he was like so how do you do that uh i is that something they do in post or whatever and he was like oh what do you mean this (laughs) and just like bring and he was like jesus i bet all the scars guards are very nice I also they're like I Swedish agree. or something. I feel like that's they are Swedish, nice. um, but yeah, I listened to the book on audiobook, mm-hmm. so I already had a pretty good understanding of the story and everything. Then I saw the first It movie against my will because I hate scary movies, mm-hmm. but I saw it against my will. Aka, I was on my phone a lot, but um, at my friend Nick's bachelor party, which was like a bachelor weekend. It was just a bunch. It was like me, his, him, his three brothers, Ralph and Keith. And he has three brothers. Yeah, well, he has Mark, his um, full brother, and then his other two are technically half brothers, and they're like older. But oh, yeah, he's got three brothers. How old? Forties. Forty-one and thirty-eight. I don't have no idea, dude. <laughs> <laughs> older. They I was hoping you would be like and- one is fifty. It could be. <laughs> Probably not. But um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, and I remember being terrified. And it just did such a good job of, like, there were there are some moments in both of the first and the second movie that are so funny. Yeah. Like, they hit the humor so hard, which just lets you drop your guard. The walls come down, and you're like, <laughs> so funny. <gasps> the scariest shit or mm-hmm. like it also did a really good job of like creepy shit mm-hmm. like things that weren't necessarily like because you know like one of my least favorite things is pop outs yeah jump scares i hate that yeah, i, I hate, hate that, that so much i appreciate it like i understand it and i know that some people like it and like by all means you do you boo boo but i don't like that it's too much tension it's too much yeah and but this movie did a really good job of having like creepy scenes that weren't even pop outs. Like it would like there's scenes where like, um, the, you know the the kid is going down a dark hallway and the either the clown or like a, a creature that the clown looks like is following them and isn't like full. Jesus Christ, dogs! You guys got to pick a fucking location and chill there. Because the in and out is nuts, guys. It's been all day with this. <laughs> I know. I believe Okay. It. But the way that the creepy thing, mm-hmm. um, whether it's like a zombie or like... Because that's the thing. That's why he's so scary. Because, um, first of all, you find out that it's like an alien. And it's a shapeshifter. And it feeds on fear. Mm. So, what are you most afraid of? Snakes? It will become snakes. Mm-hmm. Are you most afraid? You just watched a scary movie because, like, one of the things is like the kids see a movie because, like, they're when the the when they're young kids, it's like in the fifties or mm-hmm. something like that, um, and they see the Wolfman, I think, or something like it, and he becomes the Wolfman because one of the kids is like extra scared of it, so he becomes a Wolfman. Horrible. Like all this stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're most afraid of, he becomes that. Um, and it's just, oh God, it's so scary. And the way he runs down the hallway, as opposed to just like full sprinting or something or doing like like a, it's very like, yeah. And you're like, (laughs) you, you see me do it and you're like, what a joke. That would never be scary. I've seen people do it and it looks scary. So scary. It's just like very, um, unnerving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Very like, it just makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. But I like in a weird way was just like I don't know I think it's just because I have the privilege of watching it at home yeah lights on like I can look away I can look at my phone Mm -hmm. I can you know what I mean be distracted by other things I'm not like 
Clockwork Orange, like yeah. forced to in sit and like watch the whole thing. Even when I saw the second one in theaters, like yeah. luckily I'm good enough when it comes to bad or scary movies. I almost said bad movies. Um, I can anticipate when most jump scares are yeah. gonna happen, and I mean directors these days have gotten really good at it mm-hmm. because they'll do the thing where like you pull the shower curtain and there's nothing there, mm-hmm. and then they turn around and look into the bathroom mirror and there's nothing there and mm-hmm. you're like oh god and then they go inside the medicine cabinet and nothing's there and then they close the medicine cabinet and there it is or something or it's like in the reflection or I see don't i can't know. take there's that like that four whole or five scene, different that whole scene where you think the jump scare is gonna happen and it doesn't like the tension in my chest is so tight yeah and i'm so stressed like i can't even take that which is why i rewatch the same things over and over and over again because i there's no tension um you ever think about something that becomes your worst fear like pennywise like what would it become for you like i honestly for me like my like worst fears are like the dark like Mm. and like home intruders so like what are you gonna become a home intruder like i I mean i'd fucking die but it wouldn't become like a, a I mean, snake that, or a spider or a. Yeah, you know it might not I mean? be. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Or like a dementor in the dementor in the scene, um, in the third Harry Potter movie. Yeah. Like it wouldn't become Snape in my grandma's clothes. It would oh, become, you're talking about the Boggart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, for me, I could imagine like being in bed and then just like, uh, my room somehow which wouldn't make sense from a logistical standpoint but Mm -hmm. that's not how pennywise works Mm. my room filling up with water Mm. and being like like imagine me being in bed and like it's starting to just get a little wet and that Mm -hmm. wakes me up and then i'm like what the fuck and it's like yeah two feet of water Mm -hmm. and then just seeing a shark fin ah and that that would yeah oh that's scary and i'm like over on my bed I saw some TikTok the other what a day. This nightmare. is the last thing I'll say. I saw some TikTok the other day, um, of a guy going down an enclosed tube slot, like a slide, like a playground, mm-hmm. and he's filming it, and he gets towards the bottom, and then it's there's water. The, t- the slide is like totally filled with water at the end, and he's totally enclosed, and there's nothing but water, and he's got to go through water, and I was like, that's a new fear. Yeah. Unlocked. Like, because I would... Yeah, surprise water? I would, I would scoop myself Fuck back that. up. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's no way. Everyone's like, oh, he was fine. He was on a flooded playground. How flooded? How flooded? Yeah. Because is the bottom of the slide blocked off? Why isn't the water going out? Yeah. Like, no. Scare. Crazy. Spooky. This is the beginning yeah. of... Spooky month. Pretty, we're getting there. September, we'll do some other episodes. But for the sake of Hesse and Maven specifically, I know for you it's been code orange since beginning of July August. 5th. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it's my birthday month too, and I'm still like not into it as you are into it. You're big and th- you're like that with a lot of holidays though. And I love seasons holidays and stuff like that. I love holidays, I love birthdays. I love celebrating. Well, you know what I want for my birthday? I know. <laughs> Maybe we'll videotape it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No one will see it. Um, we're going to be playing D&D, by the way, but no one will see it. Um, anyway, that's all for this week's episode of Hesse and Maven. Remember to give us five stars and make sure that you tell all your friends and family to listen to our fun podcast. Again, Hesse and Maven, we're going to be talking mostly about movies and television and all things related. Yeah. Yeah. So go follow us on all the socials. Hesse and Maven, one word. Send us an email at hesseandmaven at gmail.com. Let us know what your favorite movie monster is or if we forgot any that are that should have been included on the lists and stuff like that. What did you think about our lists, you know? And what should we talk about next? Is there maybe you can give us some movie or television recommendations that we should watch? Uh, movies are a little bit easier because we can watch the whole thing in like a sitting, whereas like TV shows are a little more challenging depending on how long they are. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Raven wants to go so bad. Um, oh, and to pee Jesus. and potato shelf. And potato shelf? <laughs> Alright. That's Raven's new nickname, Potato Shelf. And thanks so much for listening to this episode of Hesse and Maiden. Tune in next time where we talk about something else. Bye! Bye.